Amen. Amen. We will join the choir to sing. Uh, we start with 509, 509 CGS. We thank God for the evangelistic revival service. I've started. Amen. Beginning with the organ prelude and then the clarinet duet and the choir's number, which uh, coupled with this uh, quartet, the blood of Jesus will never lose his power. Amen. And we pray that this blood will avail for all of us today. Amen. So we begin by singing 509 from our CGS 509. We are taking verses um, 1, 2, and the last one. Verses 1, 2, and 4, sitting down after the team from the organist, 509. Sorry about that. Five zero nine. sufficient for us. Amen. Let's say the one just next before that, 508, 508, 508, oh reapers in the whiting harvests. May God help us to wait upon the Lord, Amen. and we shall be blessed. 508, we take the three verses sitting down, 508, oh reapers in the whiting harvest. Amen. Reapers.
that. We go to the chorus now. Chorus number 25. Chorus number 25. Chorus 25. Pour it forth a mighty anthem. It's just the chorus. I want to do this twice. To pour it forth as mighty anthem. Chorus, CGS choruses number 25. Pour it for a uh, mighty anthem. We'll listen to the orchestra, orchestra playing this for us, and then we'll take it two times. to be more than conquerors. Amen. The last song before, uh, before our prayer is going to be chorus number 28 because Jesus wants us all to shine. Amen. Jesus bid us shine with a clear pure light. Amen. Chorus number 28. CGS chorus 28. We will sing this chorus two times. The first time uh, we, are, we are standing up to sing it. The first time all of us will sing with the orchestra backing up and the second time the orchestra they will also join us and will remain standing to be led in prayer. Number 28, CGS Kuros 28, 28. Jesus, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another evening of blessing. Thank you that you blessed us in the morning. Thank you that it has pleased you to gather us together, even at your sanctuary, to bless us again tonight. Father, accept our thanks. Lord, accept our praises. We thank you for all the prayers that we have offered before now that you have accepted that you have answered. Yes. Accept our thanks. Amen. We thank you for those that you have replied yeah. and you have said, no, yeah. you are not going to do that. Yeah. That is not your will for us. Lord, accept our thanks. Yeah. We thank you for those that we have offered and you are still saying to us, wait on me. Yeah. I will do it at my own time. Yeah. Father, for this, accept our thanks. Yeah. Tonight we gather together for our first revival service for this new year, 2018, God of Reviver, Amen. come down and revive us. Amen. 
save souls tonight. Amen. Sanctify tonight. Amen. Baptize with Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Amen. Heal the sick tonight. Reanoint tonight. Amen. In a special way. Amen. Lord, we want this meeting to be a special one. Yes. An anointed one by yourself. Yes. So that when the word will come out. That word will come out with power. Amen. The power in your word Amen. will be shot like an arrow. Amen. And will enter into every heart. Amen. All stony heart Amen. will be broken. Amen. And you will soften our heart. Amen. You will humble our heart. Amen. And when the time will come for us to gather together at the altars of prayer. And we will open our heart to you. Seeking your help. Begging you for forgiveness. Lord, please come down. Amen. And bless us in a special way tonight. So that at the end, we will have every cause to glorify and honor your name. Amen. Having answered our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, welcome to our evening service. It's the first of its kind this year, 2018. And we believe that the Lord God of the beginning will be with us. Amen. And he will bless us tremendously Amen. before we go back home this evening. Amen. Um, just let us ensure that we take time to pray very well and be sure that God will answer all our prayers. Amen. We want to thank those that volunteered to go out for evangelism this afternoon. Um, we pray that God will bless you greatly. Um, those souls that you have spoken to, those that welcome your message, and those that rejected your, mo your message, it's a prayer that God will touch their hearts. Amen. Yes, and we will see them all in heaven. Amen. You too will not miss heaven in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Um, there will be Bible study as it was announced in the morning, uh, starting from this Wednesday, this week. So on Wednesday, we'll be gathered here at 7.30 p.m. and at our other Bible study centers at the times that we agreed to be having our meetings. Let's bear this in mind. And we're continuing the series of our studies that we um, started last year, um, which is Holiness Series. Yeah. For this Saturday, we're looking at holiness in financial matters. I mean, this Wednesday, I'm sorry. We're looking at holiness in financial matters. And I think you don't want to miss that Bible study. So God bless you as you come. Amen. And on Friday at 8 p.m., there will be a prayer meeting here for everyone. Ensure that you attend. Um, the youths will be having their first month-end program this Saturday, um, yeah, that's this Saturday, the 17th of February, and it's going to be here in Bexley. Um, our youths from Peckham will be joining us. Those youths that are interested in attending should please register with um, Tolu Olaududu and um, Tosin Adedaya. Unfortunately, Tosin is not around today, so um, do well to register with Tolu, please. Next Sunday, if the Lord tarries in his coming, our Sunday school for all ages will hold at 9.30 in the morning, and then we'll have our divisional service at 11 o'clock. Um, God's Love Day program that we've been announcing, um, the handbills are out that we want us to hand out to our neighbors, our colleagues, our work, and friends, and people on the street also inviting them to come. That we hold next Sunday between two um, and sometime around 3.30 p.m. it will end. So please let us ensure that we are praying along and we are trusting God that God will do something about it. Amen. And talking about that, it was also announced that we, want, we are making it a day of um, giving in love. Mm -hmm. So those nice items that you have at home, um, of course we want them to be brand new, not fairly used stuff. So if you have them, you do, can even go to the store and buy some items that you just want to give to people out of love, not necessarily because they are in need. So bring them, and when you come on Sunday, give them to Sister Kofo or Sister Shireen. And then at the appropriate time, um, the needful will be done to them. And then in the evening, next Sunday at 5 p.m., we'll have our second um, revival and evangelical meeting. Um, it was announced in the morning, as it's been announced before, about our various camp meetings. Let's begin to make plans towards them. Register with Brapita if you intend to go to Portland or Nigeria camp meeting. And um, we also said that it's probably, well, I don't know if that time is gone now, 
to start buying your ticket if you are going to Portland. We found some tickets that were cheap, but I understand prices are going up now. So if you want to, please do um, um, help yourself to buy one very quickly. We now listen to the first special, and that will be by male choir, um, after which we'll have our first testimony service of the year. I guess you want to be part of that, to tell what the Lord has done for you. But one of our male choir members will open that testimony service for us. And after that, we'll have the last special, and then the word of exhortation will be brought tonight by Brother Emmanuel. God bless you. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is King, Lord, King of Kings. Oh, get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited, go tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is King, I said, get on its side, I could tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is King, Jesus Christ is King of King of Kings. You talk about people, you talk about things that really aren't important at all. You talk about weather, you talk about problems we have, yeah, out of my abroad. My friends are beside that, they bought a solution for the world. I'm gonna shout and sing. sing. Jesus Christ is King of King of King. Get on his side, I could tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get on his side, I could tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get on his side, I could tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is King, Jesus Christ is King of King of Kings. You talk about people, you talk about things that really aren't important at all. You talk about weather, you talk about problems we have, yeah, at home and abroad. But friends, I'm excited, they found a solution for the world. I'm gonna shout and sing. Jesus Christ is King of King of King. Oh, get on the side, I could tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get on the side, I could tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get on the side, I could tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is King of King of King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. And if Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. I'm happy to tell you that Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. I thank God that many years ago the Lord humbled my heart. He saved my soul. When I was in sin, he satisfied me yeah. and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Ever since then, God has been my God. Amen. He has been everything to me. Yeah. Even when I came to this, God, uh, to this uh, country, God came with me. Yeah. And with all everything I've been uh, carrying along, the Lord stands by me. Yeah. I want to thank God for, the, for his power, yeah. for his provision yeah. that he can provide. Yeah. Even when you are in need. Last year, I've not been able to give my testimony, but I thank God that God kept me and my family Amen. throughout last year. Amen. As difficult as it was, you know, uh, it's been like going to four years now that I've, I've been on my own. And God has been supporting me Amen. in terms of finance. And when it gets tough, I go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Sometimes I 
tell my mother in the Lord here in this church, and she also pray with me, with my family, and God will always provide. Amen. I thank God for this. Amen. Even though the devil was, you know, just to, you know, destroy my family, but God will not allow the devil to do that. I, I cannot, I don't know how to explain, but I want to give glory to God. Right. When it was tough, last year when it was difficult, the Lord stood by me and my family, Amen. and he provided for us. Amen. Even with my children, with the way they go to school, with the way they got support, their finances, I cannot understand. Even when I was working, when I was an, uh, an, uh, an employee, what I could not afford to do, what I could not afford to do for my children. You know, now, even that I'm on my, on my own, God is doing more than that for me. This is what the Lord can do. I want to implore you this evening that if you can come to meet this Jesus, he will do more than, more than that for you. Because God is great. Oh, yeah. I want to thank God so much for saving my soul and uh, bringing me in contact with this gospel Amen. when I was jumping from one church to another looking for something that I myself did not know. Mm. But when I came in contact with this gospel, God told me, yeah, this is the place. Amen. And God, uh, in his own time, God saved my soul. Amen. He sanctified me and filled me with his spirit. Amen. I want to especially thank God tonight for healing yeah. from the, I think it was third week in December. We are preparing for Christmas. I don't know where that pain came from. The lower back. It just started. I don't, I don't know why I did. It just started from about third week. I'm sure many people didn't know. But each time I sat down and I, I got up, I, was, I, had to, I had to kind of take it slowly yeah. for a few like five or ten seconds to stand upright from third week in December. And throughout Christmas, I was in that pain. Mm. I went back to work. Every time we had meeting, I would always be the last person to leave the meeting rooms. Because everybody else will have gone. And I was thinking, what, what's going on here? But you know what? Saturday, we went for uh, Sunday school teach, uh, elementary review. That pain was still there. That was the last evening, I remember. On Sunday, God took that pain away. Yeah. During the uh, ordinance service, I had, had that testimony that during ordinance service, God could heal. Yes. But I held on to that. Yeah. I got to work on Monday. I just stood up myself from my chair. I said, where is the pain? It's gone. Amen. Prior to that, I'd already uh, booked an appointment. to go and see a specialist. On the, I had to call them that I, I, I'm not coming for that. <laughs> okay, I said, okay, let me move it. So I moved it to 19th instead of uh, last week, Tuesday. That is he really, has God healed me? Oh. Since that, sun, uh, that Sunday, Amen. after the ordinance service, I had not felt that pain again. Amen. I want to thank God for healing power. Amen. May his name be glorified. Amen. 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 I want to thank the Lord tonight Amen. that Jesus saved my soul. Amen. Over 30 years ago, now Jesus has been all enough for me. Amen. He saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I thank God for this. I thank God for the power to keep. Amen. And the reason why I stood up this evening, I just realized what the Lord has done for me. Um, I remember 1996, I wanted to come to this country to further my education. Uh, my parents got everything for me ready and the ticket and everything. We just got to the overseer and everybody just gave them an advice that that country, don't let him go. Don't let her go to UK. They, he will, she will serve God. She will serve God. It's small help, but they just withdraw everything and they didn't allow me to come. But maybe it's God's will for me to be here. And when I was coming, I just remember my daddy, he, he prayed for me, and he said to me, he sang a song that, daughter, your journey begins. When he sang that song, I didn't understand. I went before because he cried. I cried because my dad cried. I didn't know the meaning of that. He just sang the song for me, and I came here. 
truthfully, my journey is beginning. But I thank God. God has been helping me. He has been helping me through the journey. He has been hauling all for me. God has been so faithful. Here, God made me my sure Christian. You know, that time they said it wouldn't serve God. But now, without my parents, I'm serving God. And God has been keeping me. And God has been hauling all for me. He has keeping me through, through many school of experiences, you know, just to assure me that he is the only one that can help. I thank God for it. You know, I just want you to pray for me. I want to serve God. He's the one that has been serving me. And he has been faithful for all his promises. He has promised me before I came here. I just want you to help me to pray with my family that I want to go to heaven. I want to see my parents. They are waiting for me. My sister is there. My brother is there already. Everybody is there. They are waiting for me. And I want to make it at last. Like, join me. God is good. Yeah. I thank God for the sermon this morning because he just takes you to memory lane. Yeah. You know, I just remembered when the Bible says, it told the children of Israel, go back and build boots. You know, my mind just went back as a teenager. How I longed for God. And I keep telling myself, Christianity should not be like this. I'm going to church. I'm coming back. I behave like other girls. And, and God saw my heart. I, nobody has ever told me that you must be born again. But I was like, I'm not different. People who go to church must be different. But I go to church, I'm like everybody. But you know, God heard from heaven. Yeah. Then one day, one young guy was just passing by my house, and he came in, and I said, no, boyfriend. What's this boy look, looking for? But he came and told me how God delivered him. God heard my prayer, and God sent him and said, I got saved. I was smoking marijuana in their hand, but God changed me. Then something happened. That's what I long for. Do you know that God saved me wonderfully? Yeah. Gave, I got the literature, and I knelt down in my room. Yeah. Heaven came down, yeah. and I was just praying, God, thank you for this. I read the literature. People got saved, and you know, in a wonderful way, my heart was saying, thank God I'm saved. You know, God is wonderful. Yeah. When I got into the church the first time, I saw the young girls, because I came from a home where it was very worldly. We had dancing, parlor, all night I was in dance. Name the, the, the best musician. Is it fella? Is it all? We danced all night. My mommy had a dancing hall. So I came from that home. But you know, when I saw the girls, so simple, no makeup, no jewelry, I was like, wow. People live like this. I got so excited. But when I got to it, it was persecution galore. My parents said, no way. Packed my things. I was driven out of the room. But God looked after me. Amen. You know, God has kept me. He gave me a wonderful husband. Yeah. Why I stood tonight to so thank God for the power of God. On Saturday, something drastic happened. As the women were praying, one of the sisters just, she got, she was coughing and she was choking. She was coughing, and Sister Dede and me, we just went to her. The women were praying, and God just told me, you know, you looked at it lightly. This is what people can call the ambulance. But you, you ladies prayed, and immediately God healed her. And she joined us to pray. So that's what God just did on Saturday. God is doing miracles. So night, you can receive your miracles, because God is still in the business of doing miracles.
Amen. Brethren, it's by the blood of the Lamb that we are redeemed. And that blood will avail for us today. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me, please, to Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O Lord. Amen. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than all. When we are overwhelmed, what do we do? I love that song by the choir, get all excited and tell everybody. That Jesus Christ is king. Amen. When Jesus was on this act, um, he walked miracles and a lot of people saw him and followed him. And there were some people that particularly wanted to land under his feet. And they were called the 12 disciples. And um, they were very excited to follow Jesus. Somebody like Peter said, I'll follow you all the way. Yeah. Judas was also there. Yeah. I believed. He said he would follow Jesus. Mm. And so he was counted among the 12. Mm. But in life, there comes a time when we are overwhelmed. Yes. Peter was overwhelmed that um, that song a little girl came to him and said, are you one of them? Peter could not be excited any longer. He was overwhelmed by the crowd of people. To, to be overwhelmed means to be overpowered, to be overcome, to be under a pressure. I believe that um, each and every one of us at one point or the other have been overwhelmed or would be overwhelmed. But when we are overwhelmed, what, we, what are we going to do? Are we going to say, I cannot take it anymore? Do we feel besieged by the storms of life and um, we want to throw in the towel? In times like this, what do we do? Like I said, Peter was overwhelmed and um, he sinned. You know, he actually denied Christ. And that was sin. But we thank God that um, Peter prayed. And God heard his prayer. God led him to that rock that was higher than himself. Oh, yeah. And at the time, he preached a sermon uh -huh. and 3,000 people were saved. Yeah. May God make that our portion. Yeah. Amen. Judas was also overwhelmed. Was overwhelmed by the things of this life. Uh -huh. And just like us on the school of today, he desired to have money. And he sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. And um, when he came to the realization that he had actually done this, he was overwhelmed. But what did he do? He had, he felt sorrowful. You know, the Bible tells us that um, godly sorrow does something. He works to our salvation. Yes. Yes. But the worldly sorrow yes. leads to death. It does. It does. And that was what happened to Judas. Mm -hmm. It was sorrowful, but it was not a godly sorrow. No. And so he felt he has betrayed his master. Self-pity set in. And whatsoever the thoughts of the enemy 
beclouded his mind, uh -huh. and he led him to the um, death. May God deliver us from yeah. that. The psalm I've just read is from the man we know so well. It is called the man after God's heart. And we want to pray that we'll be a people after God's heart. Amen. Turn again to Psalm 38. Let's see how he was overwhelmed. We may be overwhelmed by grief and sorrow. We may be overwhelmed by the problems of life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says um, that man's days are filled with troubles. Even as righteous, we are afflicted, mm -hmm. but the Lord will deliver us Amen. all. But there is this power that can overwhelm you, that can overwhelm me, that um, we need solution to. Yes. And that is being overwhelmed by sin is a terrible situation. David, a man of God, was overwhelmed by this. Let's see Psalm 38. And he prayed a prayer. O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chastise me in thy hot displeasure. For thy arrows stick fast in me, and my hand pressed me sore. That's the situation of being overwhelmed. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thy anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. David, a man after God's heart, was praying this prayer. May God give us a heart that will have conviction for sin. You know, we may, we, we may ask ourselves, what is sin? There are categories of sin. The Bible says, in James chapter, one, uh, chapter 4, verse 17. He that knows to do what is right mm -hmm. and does not do that, right. it's, to him it's sin. Yeah. That's true. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but for me, I have come to that, to that situation before where I ask myself, am I really a Christian? I don't know about you, but this was the situation of David. He came to that situation and he said, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a righteous man. And he prayed this prayer that we just read. Verse 4 says, For my iniquity are gone over my head. That's a situation of being overwhelmed. I remember at the time I was overwhelmed. I went to a swimming pool when I didn't even know how to swim. Um, I saw my friends. Indeed, that day I escaped from the church to go to that swimming pool. Uh, I joined my friends. Uh, their parents were very rich and they brought a car. We jumped into the car, went to one big hotel and um, so because they all had the costumes, they gave me uh, my swimming trunk, and I, f I saw them jumping into the pool. I jumped into the pool, and I tell you, I was overwhelmed by the water. I heard the preaching of my life in the water. And you know what? I cried unto the Lord, and the Lord lifted me to the rock that was higher than myself. Yeah, that singular act brought me out from that water and I sat, I had godly sorrow because I preached a sermon to myself. And that sermon was, 
if I had died, yeah. where would I have been? Yeah. You know, I was overwhelmed by that situation. I don't know the situation that you are in right now. That in the months of January, we have prayed and that prayer has not been answered. And it may look as if God does not hear. God hears prayer. God may be speaking in different ways. Like the songwriter says, God moves in mysterious ways. David continued in that prayer. I'll read verse five. My wound stinks and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. For my lungs are filled with loathsome disease. And there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and, and so broken. I have rowed by reason of my disquietness of my heart. He was overwhelmed. And he prayed that prayer. You see, we want to pray that the godly sorrow, the conviction that is coming tonight, will lead to repentance. Amen. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse 8, suddenly came to a realization. Yes. There was no preacher with him. He was overwhelmed by his situation. And he said, I will arise. And I will go unto my father. And I, I will say something. I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of your servants. But he was a son. God gave him that conviction. May that conviction come to us today. And when he was overwhelmed, what did he do? He took action. But in this prayer, David prayed in Psalm 61. When you don't know what to do, what do you do? We want to pray that the Lord will lead us. Amen. The Lord will prompt Amen. us. Amen. The Lord will stir his spirit. Amen. You know, it is the spirit of God that works salvation in us. Amen. Both to do of his good pleasure in us. We want that spirit to begin to walk. Amen. That as we launch into this year, Amen. in our revival services, Amen. miracles will be happening. Yeah. Beginning with the miracles of our redemption. Because we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And that blood is still available today. It's still available for me. It's still available for us. And it can buy us back to do the will of God. You know, Micah said something. He said, I have shown thee, O oh man, mm -hmm. what is good and what the Lord requires from each and every one of us. When you wake up in the morning, do you ask yourself, are you in the center of God's will for your life? Are you in the center of God's will for your life? Have you drifted? To the right or to the left, uh -huh. today God can bring us back. Amen. Amen. God can bring us back by his mercy. Amen. David was overwhelmed and he prayed because he remembered the faithfulness of God. He said, for thou hast been a shield for me and a strong tower from my enemies. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in, in covert of thy wings. David prayed this prayer. It, it, it is the Lord that has kept us. The Lord has kept us today. And he wants us to return to the center of his will. 
In closing, I want to read, because we, we want to have time to pray. Right. I, I want us to turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I'll read from verse 20, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that has promised. Amen. The Lord is said to bless us this year, Amen. but we must be in the center of his will. He says, let us draw near. Are you willing to draw near today? Are you willing to be led by the hand of the Lord to that rock that is higher than yourself, that is higher than myself, so that the will of God will begin to manifest in our life, in our homes, in our church? The altars are open. God bless you. Dear Lord, we thank you for this evening. We just pray, dear Father, that as many as are overwhelmed by sin and unrighteousness, as many as are overwhelmed by one problem or the other, that tonight, oh God, you give them a solution, a permanent solution, healing for the soul and healing for the body. Oh Lord, say so tonight and let names be written in the book of life. Sanctify, O oh Lord, and fill with the Holy Ghost. Heal us, O oh Lord. Amen. Make us to rejoice Amen. and send us home with joy and rejoicing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.